So what we got here is a vaporization coil for a waste oil burner. I did a preliminary test with the combustion chamber open to observe the effectiveness of the coil and also to make it easy to light. Initially I had a spray nozzle connected to the end of this thing, but it blew off almost instantly. Um, I was under the flawed impression that some good antimony solder would be able to withstand the temperatures in there seeing as how it had cool oil flowing through it. But I was wrong. I wasn't sure. I figured I'd just give it a try. I'm not sure what that white stuff is. It may be flux. You can see that there's a lot of gunk and buildup with just the very small test run I did. All kinds of just gunk is caked on there. I'm starting to think this is actually some type of residue from the combustion of the oil because and this waste oil burner that I have over here which is one I've decommissioned some of you have seen this thing in action when I cut this thing open to inspect the inside the bottom of this tank was loaded with crud it was probably three inches deep like almost all the way up to here with gunk and ash dry ash it wasn't it was caked though it was like it was almost slagged up you can see there where I scraped a lot of it out some of that could have been from the rags I was using to ignite the device I'm not really sure I would assume that that ash would be blown out I'm almost positive it was all residue from the combustion of the oil there are a lot of different compounds in motor oil that would leave these kinds of residues um, the coil does vaporize exceptionally well I am concerned about varnish which is the property of oils to cake up fluid lines like this and I figured out why they call it varnish or varnishing because inside of that combustor over there was a copper vaporization tube not quite like this one it was a little bit smaller it was about a foot long and I decided to cut it open and inspect it and inside the copper tube I found a very thin clear plastic like material had caked up around the, ex the interior of the tubing and it looks like varnish it's a shiny polishy plasticky substance that kind of crumbles and breaks up but yet it is so smooth it almost looks like pieces of glass looks like varnish exactly like table varnish but with a darker color um, this thing is most likely going to suffer the same fate I'm not sure how much varnishing can take place before this tube just clogs up this is going to be a, a test for that as well I am highly concerned with the amount of gunk that has already accumulated on my vaporization coil seeing as how I only burn about that much oil out of this thing got a lot of little filter here because as I said initially I had a spray nozzle on this thing I'm not sure the filters necessary anymore now the spray nozzle blew off I believe the nozzles over here this is the nozzle that I had on there I can't really get a focus this thing is killing me here see the two little holes this thing worked exceptionally well except it blew off almost within the first minute there's a screen in there also Ooh, looks like there's some stuff in that screen already oh yeah that probably wasn't gonna go too well that thing's already looking a little dumped up to me so that was a bad idea Turns out just an open spud alone was enough for a good vaporization. I do have some footage of this thing running that we're going to be looking at here in a minute. Yeah, what is that stuff? I don't think that's flux. Because this looks just like the stuff that I found in the other unit. That may be flux. 
but I don't know. I don't remember this thing being that dirty with flux. And I did get a lot of this white ashy stuff out of the last test run. Um, I'm not sure if this coil can withstand the environment that it's going to be exposed to for long periods of time. But um, what I'm going to do is weld a cap on the end of this and put a combustion barrel on there to direct the flames a little more precisely. I was very pleased with the performance of this device. The vaporization coil definitely was worth the time it took to construct it and the money needed to purchase the parts. So without further ado, we're going to observe some of the testing with an open face burn. And then I'm going to weld the, the end cap back on this fire extinguisher. I intend to weld this back on and I'm going to chop that barrel off and use it again. This phone is just not doing me any justice here. Yes, that barrel will be chopped off probably like right here and put in place. This here is a little Venturi tube that um, I thought would add a little extra oxygen to the mix. I'm not sure how effective it is, but I do know that it did seem to help a little bit. I did connect a blower to this tube to do a test to see if um, secondary oxygen would make the flame hotter, and it had no noticeable effect whatsoever. Barely any noticeable effect at all. Um, perhaps it, it, it doesn't mix well enough. I think the air needs to be mixed very well to get any type of blue flame activity you might expect to observe. I'm not sure waste oil can produce a blue flame despite how much oxygen you mix into it. But at any rate, the blower that was used on this came out of a $20 vacuum cleaner, a Stanley wet vac that I bought at Walmart and it uh, appeared to be capable of producing a serious amount of power. Here is the pump that was used to drive the device. This is a 12 volt pump that I salvaged out of a Swiffer wet jet, one of those floor mops. So if you're ever hard up for a high pressure gear motor or a gear pump, there you go. If you see a, a Swiffer in the trash, grab that bad boy because it has one of these inside of it. And this is a fairly pricey little piece of equipment here if you were to buy it by itself. From what I've seen, you can almost buy a Swiffer wet jet for the price this costs online. This pump. Seems kind of weird. But uh, the pump worked very effectively. I have steered away from the gravity feed system that you may have seen on that unit that's sitting over there um, because of buffeting. There was a buffeting taking place, like a pulsation in the burn. And I presume that it was caused by a pressure imbalance caused by a, a increase in pressure from combustion, which would then reduce the fuel input. And then as the fuel input was reduced, the combustion would go down a little bit which would then allow more fuel to enter, which would increase the combustion again, which would then reduce the inlet fuel pressure again. And that was causing a swing back and forth. And sure enough, this device, because it uses a powered fuel feed, did not suffer any buffeting. Now, maybe that wasn't the cause, but I am almost positive that was what was happening with the other unit. So, just wanted to get some some footage of the inside of this thing before it's entombed and I am very concerned with the amount of residue that is built up in the short duration around that coil but uh, we'll see how it goes the thing puts off a tremendous amount of heat and a pretty good fire so so far it wasn't a waste of time
as long as I can keep it from clogging up due to varnishing, I'll be good to go. Incredible. That's some legitimate joke. 